Now, a lot of you may have dreamed about being a vet when you grew up. That's a pretty common dream when you're young, to work with animals all day. But for many of those who've gone into the veterinary profession, particularly in rural areas, that dream has turned into a story of high stress, low pay and poor mental health. In recent years, there's been a lot of coverage about the toll this is taking on vets. And now there's a call for South Australia to conduct a parliamentary inquiry into what can be done to turn it around. One Nation MLC Sarah Game recently gave a speech in state parliament talking of her own struggles as a veterinarian and calling for an inquiry into what's been called a mental health crisis. Well, firstly, before my career in politics, I worked as a veterinarian, and so I've seen uh, firsthand the strain on veterinarians in the veterinary industry. And also the statistics back up what I've seen, which is that, unfortunately, our veterinarians have a very high suicide rate. It's four times that of the general population and two times that of other medical professionals like doctors and dentists. And we also have a big problem with retaining our vets. Vets make a big contribution to our society, not just with pets and the wonderful uh, impact on our wellbeing from owning pets, but farm animals, production and biosecurity. And I think we're a pet-loving nation and we need to be a vet-loving nation and look after our vets. I know that other states have conducted similar inquiries, or particularly New South Wales has, has conducted a similar inquiry. Do you see something along the lines of that and whether that has been a, a worthwhile endeavour? Well, I'm certainly keeping an eye on what the other inquiries are doing, and I think those reports are coming out soon. I want this inquiry to particularly focus on the impact of financial strain and high workload on veterinary mental health and wellbeing and low retention rates. I'm hoping that we're going to obviously get some good tangible outcomes and government support for those outcomes. But I'm also hoping that driving this inquiry and being able to talk to people like yourselves, we're going to do some myth busting. And I think there's just two myths that I do want to take the opportunity to bust. And one is that vets have a good wage. They don't. Most vets are earning between eighty and $100,000 a year. Many veterinarians earn less. And when you think about the veterinarian you see in the morning, is often the same vet that you see in the evening. might be the same one that who's worked on the weekend uh, or overnight in country areas. It's a very low pay. Um, and the other one is when you do hear community aware about uh, the stress of being in the veterinary industry, they naturally assume, well, it must be stress from dealing with sick animals. Now, no one wants to deal with a sick animal or the sadness of a sick animal, particularly when you can't make them better. But really, I want to start changing that narrative because I believe, and certainly all the feedback I've had from my veterinary colleagues, uh, is that actually it's not dealing with sick animals. It's the very, very high pressure that they're under in terms of work hours, the load of work they have to do within those hours, coupled with the very poor pay. And I think they're just getting really, really run down. As you say, this is an industry you have yourself worked in and does that sort of mirror with your experience of working as a vet, uh, you know, those long hours, that low pay, that extra stress and, pr- and pressure of, of, uh, of an industry that needs more hands on deck? Absolutely. I mean, I remember first graduating and working in a practice where you worked 12-hour days, you worked weekends, you took the phone overnight for $30, you were back at work the next day. It didn't matter if you'd been up all night. And I remember doing a carving one um, evening, well, actually I think it was in the, more about 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. in the morning. I'd been, you know, kicked and um, so on. And it'd been a very physical job. I had a veterinary student with me and I was so exhausted I actually managed to bulldoze the farmer's fence on the way out. But I was expected back at work the next day. Now, I think particularly our rural and regional vets are under those sorts of extraordinary pressures. And I think people need to realise that veterinary care is not subsidised the way, uh, obviously, that human care is. And so these businesses are under pressure and their employees are under a lot of pressure. So you've made this formal call for South Australia to to get an inquiry underway. Have you had much of a response or feedback as to, you know, whether there is support for that? I think there definitely is some support. I know of individual members within various parties who are supportive, but whether or not they've got a whole party stance on on this matter at the moment is, is to be seen. I think what I'm calling for is for this veterinary inquiry to have its own committee, and I want that to consist of uh, members from all, all parties and to get real tangible outcomes. So I will be calling it to a vote towards the end of the year or give it a, a few more months uh, because we're about to have a big parliamentary break. 
but I would really appreciate listeners if they do uh, support this matter to write to their local member and say, you know, come on, let's support this veterinary inquiry. That's One Nation MLC, Sarah Gay.